Hi, I'm Brad Nelson. I'm a professor at Conestoga College, part of the School of Workforce Development. I'm just making a quick video to kind of capture my journey, trying to use um, an alternate to Zoom for my classes this term. I'm not doing it for the entire class section. In a two-hour class, I'm still using two hours um, of Zoom for my lectures, sort of the traditional PowerPoint lecture style. Uh, but there's a one-hour support session, and for the one hour, I didn't wanna just do another Zoom thing. Um, I found last year that I wasn't getting the kind of interaction that I wanted with my students and, um, and nor was I getting the one-on-one -on -one time that I needed with my students to check in, check their understanding and support them in a sort of uh, less confrontational way, not large group, uh, break down some barriers, that kind of thing. And I also wanna give my students more of a chance to interact you know, with each other and so I've been studying um, options. I've been a part of the VR community for a few years now, and the tools are getting better and better. And lots of trial and error, trying different packages, commercial packages and the like. I finally settled on using a package from Mozilla. You might know Mozilla from uh, as the developer of Firefox, the browser, and they've created a companion or sort of two packages if you will one allows you to create a three-dimensional environment and one then allows you to sort of host the three-dimensional environment and it's open source so completely free no licensing no registration required no software required it just runs in a browser it doesn't have to be firefox i use it in chrome i've had absolutely no issues um and so there, it's got a lot going for it. And uh, so just to be clear up front, I'm not asking my students to use any kind of special hardware or headsets. They don't need VR goggles or anything like that. Although it entirely works with VR goggles if they have them. Um, none of my students do, um, but that's cool. It, I've designed this to work on a laptop or a desktop or a cell phone or an iPad or a Chromebook. It works on everything. And so I'm kind of excited about it. I've run my first week of uh, support sessions in this between four different classes and it worked beautifully. And the feedback I got from my students is super positive. So I wanna share this with you um, and I'm doing it now because I'm about to change the, the rooms, uh, reset them for week two. So I wanna kind of walk you through what I had and sort of capture it for my own purpose so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so a really quick walkthrough. You build the space in um, a package called Spoke and, um, and I'll say you don't have to do this. Mozilla has a number of different scenes, they're called scenes that are available for you to use sort of without any kind of programming or manipulation or design on your part, I just find for my purposes, I would rather have a, a space that I've set up specifically to meet my students uh, for all kinds of reasons, which I'll kind of show you. All right, so um, you can do a Google search, but here it is hubs.mozilla.com slash spoke, hubs and spoke, get it? Ha. And you create, so you need to register, like you, you create an account, but it's a really interesting sort of thing. You provide it with an email and then it sends you, it, it puts a cookie on your computer as far as I understand. And that cookie on your machine is your sort of identity to get into the system. So I never log in formally. It's this, it's a weird kind of a thing, but it, as long as I go back and use my same Chrome browser, then it knows who I am and I get access to all my projects. Okay. So I've created different spaces. Um, let's see, I will just, so I'll show you kind of one that I created um, last, last term and sort of prototyped. <laughs> oh, error loading model. Oh yeah, because I've fiddled with things. Um, but you, so you're working in this three-dimensional kind of environment. And essentially it's like a, so this is like a CAD, program, if you will. Um, it's quite easy to kind of get around. I'm just using a, you know, a mouse or cursor keys. You 
bring in different objects. You can you can move them in three dimensions, three dimensional space. There's a nice simple and um, kind of information panel uh, where you can change positions. You can rescale, resize. Everything's on a sort of X Y Z coordinate grid. So very very powerful. And you, as you can see, you sort of almost have infinite space to work with. And you just build in different objects and things. And there's uh, there's built-in architectural kits that they provide that give you like windows and doors and pillars and that kind of stuff, different sizes. You can do fancy ceilings, um, arched ceilings, different inserts of window panes and all that sort of stuff, floors, doors, walls, windows, trim, roofs, rails, stairs, ceiling, all kinds of things. And they have some really odd things like there's this little kit of rocks. Um, you also have access to uh, directly within the package to Sketchfab and all of the sort of different um, models that have been created in there. You can do searching. And so what I found is uh, these are interesting but but useful only in a limited way when you start bringing in models you're going to find I, what i found is the the design of them is fairly complex and, and so they everything you put into your model is kind of defined on how how much you think about how much um effort's going to take for your students to see it or to or for their device that to load it and look at it, and especially in three dimensions and move around in it. And when you have a class full, like 20 or 30 students in a space, there's already a lot going on. There's audio, there's video, there's the information you're presenting, your PDFs, your pictures, whatever you want to put out into your space, into your classroom. And then if you put on top of that, these complex models, it starts to overload the overall system, it overloads their students' cell phones or their laptops if they have older model machines. And, and I find, and I think that's what I did wrong last term when I first tried this, um, and, and it would crash on my students or they would hang or they would be really laggy. And that's not helpful at all, right? The students are frustrated and can't get into your class or they're sort of the technology is bugging them out. So, I would recommend staying away from adding Sketchfab or relying on it to build cool things in your model. You could build splendid stuff, but it's not adding to the learning experience by having these sort of fancy things hanging out. So, um, and in fact, the space that I showed you, this I'm showing you here, is um, ultimately too, this was too complicated. I, you know, I was getting kind of fancy here. And if you sort of look at this, it it was, I designed this to roughly um, approximate the, the Dune campus or our Dune campus for Conestoga College with sort of, you know, there's the main access road, um, the physical activities complex, the sort of the main building here, um, the ATS building and and the pond with the funny with its funny shape, you know, and so that was cool. Um, and I'll just sort of come come on down into it. Right on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sort of bouncing too fast on you. Um, but you know, so here was my main room. Um, I had places set up to meet these sort of stations that people could meet. I had instructions as people came in. You, you predefine with these little spawn points where people enter and even what direction they're facing when they enter into this space. Um, you know, I had uh, and this second floor that, oh, I'm, I'm in sort of flying mode, so it doesn't, it's actually, ignoring walls and doors right now. Um, you know, and this is where I th started overloading things, right? I, I brought in this nice um, map of the world, 
Uh, I thought that would be cool because we have uh, our classes are international students, so they could be, you know, literally from anywhere around the world. And I thought he could, they could come in and walk around and point to where they were. Um, and I provided sort of a overview of our region, you know, it shows our different universities, Conestoga College and that sort of thing. And then I also um, created from Google Maps, you know, a little sort of local, more local view. We have a lot of students who live out in the Toronto area still um, at our college locations, you know, so they could walk around, have conversations, that kind of thing, and, and participate in the class. Uh, this is an upper level, but in theory, uh, once you learn how to fly in this world, you can even, you know, meet up here on the roof and have conversations. And you can, and I've set up, you can meet outside you can, and you can go meet in the middle of the swimming pool if you wanted. Okay, so that was my original design. Too complicated. Um, fun, cool, wow. But there were too many places that students could go. There were too many places they could be. So as a facilitator, when they left the room, you know, I had to run around and try to figure out where they were. It was like a, you know, my lost sheep kind of thing. And like I said, it, then it was, I think it overloaded everybody's system. It was a little bit buggy and it crashed. Um, Mozilla Hubs recommends a limit of 24 attendees in a given room. And then the idea is beyond that, you should split into your event into multiple rooms. So you create different instances. And then, so each attendee um, only has so much going on, but I don't want to do that with, you know, my class is 30 and I kind of, in my version of math, 30 isn't that much bigger than 24. Um, I want everybody in the same room. So my compromise is to make the space a lot simpler. So we'll go back to my projects. And I'll show you, this is this, the system that I did build. Um, okay, so it's a little, a little simpler. Well, here, what I'm going to do is just show you a very over, an overall version of this. And then I will switch and show it to you as the student sees it. So there's my, there's my overall space. Um, so I have a presentation screen up at the front. And in Mozilla Hubs, it's called a media frame. And what's cool about it is it's, it's kind of like putting up a whiteboard at the front of your class or wherever in your space. And then you can put anything in it. It's just a frame and you can put in uh, a, an image. You could put up a PDF um, or you could put up a, uh, you could share your screen. So as a presenter, um, you know, if you wanted this to be really live and dynamic, then so all I've done, I've created the, the frame, not the content, there's no content here, just the frame for it. And then when I'm actually preparing for the, that day's lecture, I use this scene and I put my uh, whatever material I want into the frame, you know, just as you kind of come in before your class and hang your posters or whatever. It's a bit like that, right? Or you'd load up your USB stick and you'd show it. The projector is there, the content isn't there until you walk in as a presenter. So this is kind of the same way. Um, and I've shaped the, um, the size of it. You can see like six by eight, it follows the four to three ratio of a standard PowerPoint slide. The one um, Mozilla Hubs doesn't let you natively import, bring in or post PowerPoint, but it lets you put up PDFs. So it just means that before your presentation, you got to take your PowerPoint and export it to a PDF and then show your PDF. Alternately, you can just share your screen. And then you're, and, and then you can do whatever, any website you're showing, Chrome browser, YouTube video, whatever you want to show. Okay. And then what I've done intentionally is created these um, different kind of, and they're just, there's nothing sort of unique about them. They're not separate physical spaces or anything. They're just uh, a platform that I put in and I, I used a different 
Uh, I used a wood planks pattern to differentiate from the floor. So it gives a place to, for students to go. And I've created 10 of them. Uh, you can see eight here if I zoom out a bit. Hmm, if I zoom out a bit, the gets in the way. Okay, so there's, you can see now the 10 spaces that I've got. Um, and I've got them numbered. And the idea then is instead of breakout rooms in Zoom, we just tell students go find an open space and meet with your team. And so they look around and they have a look, number four is open and they just move their character over, move their avatar over to space number four or five, whatever, and meet there. And the system is really cool. It uses something called spatial audio, meaning you the volume of any given sound source is proportional to it, the distance from it. Um, and you can configure whether it's a linear drop-off or exponential drop-off or whatever. So far, I haven't played with any of that. I just use the default because it's just me talking. Um, and yeah, so the students who are here, like down in this, at this corner, will, will hear these students, but they won't be as loud as the people they're talking to. And, and, the, and if there's a group down here talking, they'll barely hear them or not hear them at all down here. And, and so for me, this really does kind of um, instill a sense of presence in a space in a larger group. And it's actually kind of nice to be able to hear other students talking. So instead of this sort of classic Zoom silence, where you get into a breakout room with four people and, and you only hear yourselves and you have, you're totally isolated from the rest of the world. You have no idea if the other groups are working, done, all having the same challenges that you do, rocking and rolling, whatever, right? You have no idea and you can't, bounce from breakout room to breakout room as a student. Typically, you know, we direct them into spaces where here, if you're working in this space, you can hear what's going on around you and you can see, are they working, are they done? Um, if you got questions, you could move over and join another group or and ask, or you see that they're, they've nailed something and got to figure it out, go over and figure out what they're doing. Um, but it also means as an instructor, you can walk around. Okay, anyway, so I'll, I'll kind of come back and just finish my design concept here. So you see the space is much simpler. It is this box, basically it's a rectangular platform. It's room for people to move around. Uh, what is it? It's 30 meters long. Um, I think about, well, actually, yeah, let's switch this grid and we can actually see there, so that's a that's two meter spacing. So you can kind of see this is four meter. Each one of these platforms is four meters by six meters, and and so you you know assume that a character, a person, takes up about a meter of space. Then you're going to have two people deep and three people across very comfortably. And in this space, people can actually congregate closer because it's just a vir virtual avatar. So kind of personal space doesn't come into play so much, right? So lots of room for six people here, six people here, six here, six here, six here, and, and so on across the 10 stations. Um, okay, so that kind of gives you a view of the overall size. So then the only other thing that I've, and then I surrounded by water and you can't walk on water in this world. Um, and then there's nothing after that. There's sort of this kind of dock or wall around it that you can walk around, you can walk on top of if you could get over there. Um, just as you can walk up on this space, but you can't sort of fall in. And I've created this uh, kind of dock out here and you can, these are these spawn points that I'm showing you or showing you before. So anybody who enters into this world will randomly be dropped onto one of these points, predefined points, and be facing this. And I'll show you this in a minute. So they're facing a signboard that tells them how to move and that gets them going. And then I have a little wayfinding to say, 
Okay, once you figured out how to move, come on over and, and enter into the space and join us. And I've got a similar dock back here, but I don't use it for anything. It's just for symmetry. And then some moving water. And there's literally nothing else to the whole space. The only other thing that I've added is from Sketchfab, this is the one thing I've added from Sketchfab, is a, it's called a low poly, meaning you can see it's very chunky, so they're crudely defined. <laughs> it's a, they, they call it a Star Wars scene. I don't know if it came specifically from a Star Wars thing, but you can already see it's warning me. It says, hmm, this object contains 16,000 polygons. So it's complicated, but I think it's nice. And I'll show you in a second. When you're in the scene, um, it's, it's kind of nice to have a sense of space or presence in a, in a world um, so you don't feel quite so lost. OK, so we can, we can open this in hubs, um, but I'll just switch to my other tab here. So instead of, this is hubsmozilla.com spoke, this is just hubs. And so you can do a Google search for Mozilla hubs. Um, and so I've set some favorites. So I've, what I've done is I've used that same scene for my two courses. I teach one, right now I'm teaching one course in leadership and one course in problem solving. So I use the same scene for both, but I, I have them as independent instances, they call them rooms. So I have two different rooms. So it's kind of like two different classrooms, right? And the classroom is designed the same way with chairs and seats and the projector or projectors. But I load content into each one of them independently week by week in preparation for that week's lecture. So let me show you um, the, how this looks as a student then. Now, this will just say again, this is just a browser window. There's no software, there's no special software. There's nothing that they need to download. There's nothing that they need to do. They just follow a hyperlink that you can provide just like a Zoom link. There's no passwords. They just follow the link. And it works really well actually on a cell phone. Um, it's super, super easy and to navigate around and works like most of the utility and functionality you would get on desktop, you can actually get on a cell phone and a lot. So that's great for a lot of students. Um, works on Chromebook, right? Because the, it's not the processing power of the device so much. Uh, their internet speed has to be decent. The bandwidth has to be decent, but I'm not sure that it's any much more taxing than Zoom, frankly. Okay. You can enter on a device, meaning a, like a, a VR headset, like a Quest or something like the Quest 2, works great. That's what I have, and it's, it's very fun and compelling to be in it um, in VR. But the thing I like about this is that it, it's almost as effective to, to do this just on a flat screen. OK, so they would join the room. Uh, a bit like Zoom, you can test your audio ahead of time. I'm going to make sure mine is on mute just so I don't kind of um, uh, <laughs> mess up my Zoom recording here. Okay, so I've landed in one of those predefined spots that I created and I'm facing the direction that I set that, um, like I defined the characters that they would all face this screen that I've set up. So on both sides of this dock, you can see I'm on the left, left branch of this wooden platform and, and either side faces the same screen. I had, so this is one tweak I've already made from last week. I found I had a little bit more complicated directions for moving around. There's other subtleties that you can do and that kind of was overwhelming for people. They need to see very, very simple instructions to get started. So this is as easy as you can make them. Um, welcome. Start by moving and 
So I'm just pointing out, you can use your keyboard and these are classic game keys. You can use the A key, the D key, W, S. And if you use the Q or the E, you rotate. If you're on a touch screen, you literally, you pinch and zoom and swipe, like you pinch to move forward, you, or you pinch to move backwards, you zoom to move forward and you look around in any directions. So it's, it's like super um, kind of intuitive on a touch screen. You can use it, uh, now I got a tradi well, traditional either. Um, track ball kind of a thing that I use for and the one thing I do find is easier than the Q and the E which do these sort of jump turns um, let's see 45 degree jump turns uh, if you use your left mouse click and drag it's a little smoother you can look up and down and sideways and then you can also do this while you're moving so it it lets you sort of walk and turn at the same time. Okay, so then the other thing is I had more information here and thinking that would lead them into the room. I've, in this instance then um, from last week, that was my other learning is, okay, where do I go? So now it's super obvious, go, <laughs> go this way. Okay, so all students really need to do right now, right, is, is they figured out if they were over here, they would have started somewhere like this. They would have seen this. You can, you can see the arrows. So, you know, as soon as they would move and even if they haven't got turning figured out and they just move forward and they come into my space. Now, you're welcome to read more directions or instructions, uh, but they honestly don't need to. They can just come on straight in. And so this is, right, and this is how you, you're entering into the space and it's kind of cool. It's welcoming. This is where I say, I, I kind of like the clouds. It sort of gives you a sense of, you know, overall proportion or space. You've got this nice big kind of overarchy bit, but it's open to the sky. It's kind of fun. I mean, who wouldn't want a classroom that looks like this, right? Um, okay, so. Um, yeah, and so what I've done is set up, this was week one, and I just wanted to do week one as a kind of an introduction. Just get used to the space, meet a couple of people, we get to meet, super simple, right? It's only a one hour session. So I created, so I went into PowerPoint and I created everything that I wanted to post in the room. And then I saved them, and in this case, I saved one slide each to a PDF. And so each one of these things that you're seeing posted is a single PDF or a, you know, a single sheet PDF made exported from PowerPoint. And, and this is in this media frame that I'm talking about, um, which is as simple as, if I unpin it, now it's free to move. So there's my, there's my PDF. You can see back there is the media frame. So it's kind of like I walk in with my poster and for the day I post it and it expands to fill this established um, space and format and it's flat and, it, and then when I pin it as the host, it stays there even if I'm not here, which is really cool too, right? Because now you've got, you've created a, um, cancel the menu. Um, you've created, um, you've created a room with information for your students that now persists whether you're there or not. And this is another benefit I find of hubs over Zoom. If you, as the host of Zoom, leave, your students, you know, the meeting's over and your students are vaporized, right? They're gone. They, they, they're no longer meeting. By creating this space, 
this the e, the the hyperlink to this right this this link is persistent and and I don't need to be here and and so if students missed the class or or after this one hour session they realize you know what there was something I didn't quite get they can go back anytime at their leisure I don't need to be here and, and all this stuff is still up in the room and so they can kind of come back after class you know and revisit the space and do whatever they got to do and kind of get comfortable with it and I've had students say yeah I, I, I showed my you know I showed my family it was really cool and so I showed them this space because because I thought it was really neat like that's awesome okay so I gave it means you got to pack your instructions on the one slide but okay um you can see the, the you know the graphics are nice and clear on a screen works fine um all right so like i said i've created this created uh, seven practice exercises trial seven if you have questions to ask that kind of stuff so, so just a little introductory information so you can see you know, so here's this uh, three meter by two meter space uh, as a platform. I've numbered each one. Um, so they're easy you know, to, to find, or if you're group number three, meet on group number three space, that kind of thing. Okay. And I did this in a, I did this in order, but they can do this. Um, like it works better if they go from one around, but you can do this in any order. I said, Hey, here's how to change your name because when you enter into hubs you haven't identified yourself you haven't registered you haven't signed up for anything so it gives you a random name so here's how to change your name um then you know naturally step two come on up introduce yourself to someone which was really i, mean, I love seeing this when in first class <laughs> So imagine you're in Zoom. How how many times in Zoom have you had your first class and had students introduce themselves to another student and actually have a conversation? Right? It, it can't happen in Zoom unless you set up breakout rooms and say, okay, everybody, we're gonna do breakout rooms. I'll give you 10 minutes or 15 minutes to introduce yourself to some people. And you and you create, you know, a handful of breakout rooms, and now they're in groups of four or six. It, yeah, they get to talk, but they'd have to turn their cameras on and all this sort of stuff. Here, there's no cameras involved. They're they're just avatars. They show up as <laughs> sort of show you. We show up as um, uh, robots. Um, here's my here's my current app uh, avatar. Here's or um, change up or whatever. Let's see. Let's sort of, uh, feature. Here's your avatar choices. So you show up with this monster fox, this little fox, right? Firefox, get it? Um, Panda bears, robots, little foxes. Some people like these dancers. So they, it's this gif of a dancer, which is really annoying, but fine, whatever. Uh, different characters. There are others. Uh, Okay, um, I end up, I tend to choose this one because I like the concept that's it's really nice and welcoming. And okay, but nobody's worried about appearances. It doesn't like they're just cartoons. And at first I thought that was really hokey and I, and there's a way around it. We can even create a more serious, serious avatar. I, I at the risk of bouncing around on you. Um, I thought I'd have mine here, but you can create or use a, an avatar GLB. Um, so Ready Player Me is a website that lets you take a selfie shot and create your, an avatar of yourself, a sort of cartoon version of you. It works really, really well, and it will and it supports this and many, many other applications. And you can create a you create an avatar using Ready Player Me, just a website, and and it'll give you a uh, you copy the URL, copy it in here, create your own avatar. Quite frankly, I'm not sure why mine's not here, but doesn't matter. Um, 
Okay, so this is me. Okay. And if you want to look. Back out of this. Okay. Um, oh, that's weird. Oh, <laughs> so there I am. Okay. That's like that's me. <laughs> this this uh, really prideful, multicolored uh, astronaut character, and everybody shows up as some. Weird sort of a thing. Okay. Um, where was I? Okay. So back to this introduction. So here I am, you know, week one, day one. It's the pandemic. We can't meet in class, but I've got students around the room just introducing themselves and going, hey, you know, how's it going, man? Oh, hey, bro, what's up? Uh, where are you from? Oh, I'm from here. Oh, that's cool, bro. That's, you know, not far from me, or that's a different, but, oh, hey, bro, what's going on? Apparently, bro is a new word, <laughs> and everybody's a bro, but but they're just talking. They're actually talking, right? And it was beautiful, <laughs> really beautiful to see that. Okay, so, you know, as simple as that. Um, let's see, I gave them, just had to make sure they could see again, have practice moving around. Um, then, um, Also wanted to show that you can bring 3D objects in. So you have this menu down here uh, where you can place objects like a 3D model. And, and this gives students right access to this whole same uh, Sketchfab space. And now this is where it's getting into, you know, where I think it might be kind of useful. Um, I don't know. Uh, an airplane, like let's say, I don't know, they're working on airplanes or they really think airplanes are cool. All right, well, here's a, here's an airplane. Uh, okay, <laughs> like all good computer technology, it's flawed. Oh, let me see. It's getting confused by what I'm trying to do. Okay. Um, so some of the links are broken, some of them aren't broken. I'll show you maybe in a minute. You can call it three, three objects. Uh, okay, let's get one that actually works because that's hey a paper airplane. Oh, look at that. Okay, not as exciting as a real airplane, but still. So there's a paper airplane. You can manipulate it. Um, You can make it a larger paper airplane. You can make it a smaller paper airplane. Okay, and so now this paper airplane is in the room, and students can walk around it and talk about aerodynamics. Um, so there's kind of a cool thing to, you know, it brings in interesting concepts. They can, so they can place three D models. Uh, they can bring. You, other scenes of other worlds, they can share shifts, they can share, they can put a camera up to take pictures of themselves and do selfie shots, and they can upload models. And I've actually created, like you can go to Sketchfab yourself or you know, some of the simple 3D drawing packages, create a 3D model and, and upload one yourself, which is cool. Students can also share their screen or share their webcam. Uh, Share your webcam. Did I just do it? Oh, that might just really mess me up. So maybe I'm not going to do that because I'm in Zoom and I don't want to mess up my recording. Um, okay, but that opens up all kinds of possibilities. I show them a couple of navigation tricks, like there's you because you have all this information in the room and. Um, you know, sometimes there's the stuff that you posted and your students want to be able to see it um, and see it for themselves. So you can, under this objects menu, you can actually scroll through and, and see everything that's in it. And you go, oh, hey, why did I, how did I share my screen? You can call, like they can call this up. Every student can do this independently. 
and look at any individual object that's in the room, they can then um, yeah, click on it. Now they can actually go to it, like this little moving character, right? They'll move in front of it, or they can um, click on the link to it and you know, if it's an object or whatever, and then you know, save it for future use kind of thing. So that's um, really cool. It's a and it's one way of navigating around. If you if you want, you could you know, you could say, I want to go to station two or one. It click on it, click view, and it would take you there. Um, okay, so oh, I guess I did. Um, Right, so that was, and I put a little rocket, tucked it in behind the uh, back here, and um, and so if you use it, it sends you over, and you can walk around and see the rocket. Okay, then show them how to share their screen, and then um, one of the really cool features that I plan on using a lot here is up here number ten. Um, this whole sort of chat function and notes. So there's a um, chat function in hubs. Um, so you can say, hello world, just like everybody does. And it pops up in chat. Um, also makes a little ping or pop noise when you do that, which I've discovered is a really good troubleshooting thing. If if you have a student who's having saying that they can't hear you or they have a problem with sound, um, when I went onto the forums, they suggested this is a really simple way for them to check their own audio. And if they can't hear anybody talking, maybe it's because nobody's talking. So just open up, tell them just to open up chat and, and, and you're chatting with them, right? Because um, they're saying, Professor, I can't hear anything. So you can say, um, when you enter a chat, note do you hear the pop sound when you enter it and i think i could i don't have i forgot to turn on sound sharing so you didn't hear it yourself but um if they can't hear that then they have a sound problem themselves right their, their mic isn't kind of they're, they're they're not directed to the right sound device or whatever and then they should come down here under more uh preferences and fix their sound controls or their own sound settings. It's not a problem with the room because that will always pop whenever a note is entered. Okay, but you can also say, hello, barf nice, <laughs> hello, brave. I can hit a shift key and enter to make paragraphs or whatever. Now, instead of hitting enter and it would go into the chat stream, I can hit this little magic wand icon and it shows up in the world as a, right, as a, oh, I'll make my complicated. It's a different way of getting around. Um, it, it sh there it is, there's their note. Post-it notes, right? How many exercises do you have with your classes where you want them to brainstorm or you're doing some jigsaw puzzle work, or, you know, or around Robin or think pair share or whatever you're doing. And then you want students to sort of put up ideas. Like in my problem solving class, I'm gonna do a session where we're, we're gonna practice using the Ishikawa or fishbone diagram, right? To brainstorm potential root causes under these different categories. Well, I'm going to create um, just a blank fishbone on a PowerPoint slide, save it as a PDF, put it up, on, put the same copy around the room at each of the different stations and say, and here's a problem or whatever, get into your groups, use the fishbone to collect some ideas. So then they would just post their, um, take their ideas and, now, a little complicated because it'd probably be better if they shrunk it down a little bit. Otherwise, you're not going to have a lot of room on a screen. But then they will come up here, just like a normal human would, 
and post it. Now, this is where it does get a little bit weird. I have to figure out how it works with students. Like I'm in my version, like I'm the, I'm the world owner, so I can post into this frame. I'm hoping that my students can. I don't think that they can, but all right, but it's good enough. So now there's their, their note and, and everybody can put a note and, and each other can move their notes. Like if somebody says, no, 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 bro, it should be over here. And then they can move it on their, on their cause. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so I think this feature is really, really cool. I plan on using this a fair bit where they'll create their own ideas, create their own notes, post them in the world. Everybody sees it, can manipulate it, talk about it. Um, you can, you can uh, delete them, you can clone it, you can, <laughs> that class. oh, there you go. You can center it in your view and see it in the largest life um, to read it. Okay, and then my idea is, you know, as, a, as the instructor, as a facilitator for your class, imagine now you've got, so here you are, Ted, just in my position here, and you've got your groups of students working around on all these different spaces, working away independently, doing their thing. You could hear them all, you're just like you would in a normal space. And if you hear uh, over here on pad two, you know, they're not very far along. Everybody else is sort of making tracks, rocking and rolling, but group two, you can see they're struggling or haven't gotten very far. So you come on over and go, hey guys, um, you know, how, how can I help? Uh, is, is everything clear? Uh, you know, I haven't, I see you've only got, you got a couple ideas. That's great. I you know I like what you got here going on so far. Um, I'm struggling with anything or what can I do for you guys? What can I do to help? Okay, where if group three is doing great, but then all you need to do is step up and say, hey, these are, these are awesome ideas. Um, you know, I love the inclusion of this and that and, and so on. This is a, that's a really uh, creative answer for something. Thanks very much. Or how about this? Um, you guys are, uh, moving ahead really well. So could I ask, could two of you go over just for a minute and help out uh, group number two? They're, you know, I, they could use some help with the concepts and, and you've got that part figured out. Can you give them a hand? Right? Help your class. Could just be a part of it and start facilitating a class like you would normally do if we were actually face to face and together. Um, except you get to work underneath fluffy blue sky and fluffy clouds, you know. And see, this is what I like. You're not isolating people into breakout rooms. Everybody's here. Everybody can collaborate in the space. This is why I say you can use existing hub spaces that have been pre-modeled. You're welcome to do that to get started. You're welcome to contact me, I'll send you a, and, and you're welcome to use this scene for any room you build and do your own thing with it. It's all these, uh, the scene as it stands are all just these blank frames. There's a frame in each one of these, on each one of these stations and you put your own content up. Okay, anyway. I think that's what I wanted to show kind of first round. Um, I wanted to kind of capture this because now I'm about to take down all these posters, rank them up, throw them away and replace them with a new set of exercises. Um, one for my problem solving class and a different set of sort of exercises for my leadership class. So starting tomorrow, this room will look different until I reset it again for next week. Um, okay, I made it a little bit longer than I planned, but I think it's really kind of cool to sort of show you what's going on. Um, share a bit of my excitement about the potential that we've got here, show you that it's not 
massively challenging. Uh, yeah, stay tuned. I'll try and record these, not necessarily once a week, but when I've got something interesting to share about my journey in using Mozilla Hubs to support uh, virtual learning space for online learning. Thanks very much for joining me.